Welcome everybody. We're here at the Bainbridge Island Museum of Art on our field trip. We want to welcome you here. We're open and we hope that you all have a wonderful trip. Come join us for our field trip. Well, we're here at the Bainbridge Island Museum of Art and we're here for the exhibition of the Breathe exhibit. And we just want to welcome you. Let's go on our field trip. We're here at the Paul Rucker Forever exhibit. I wanted to talk a little bit about the Scottsboro Boys. A lot of people don't know what happened to those young men. It was on March 24, 1931, between Chattanooga and Memphis, Tennessee that these young men were stopped, they were arrested, and they were held. They were from the age of 13 to 19 years old. And when they were arrested in Jackson County, Alabama, the charge was brought that two white women who were subsequently interviewed claimed that the boys raped them while they were on the train. Eight of the nine boys were convicted of the crime and sentenced to death, with the remaining 13-year-old boy sentenced to life in prison. And I don't think that story has really been written and told in our history, in our school districts. And I think it's important because we're on a journey for justice here at BEMA that we tell the stories, the untold stories that have not been told and being captured here with Paul Rucker's Forever Exhibit. I think it's very vital because we are on this journey for justice, not just for justice, but for human rights and civil rights and social justice. So as we go through the exhibit, I just wanted to, to, for us to understand the history, the long history that we've had with social injustices. Does anybody know about the four little girls? Well, if you don't, we're here to learn today. Here we have Miss Addie Mae Collins, and we have Carol Robertson, and Cynthia Wesley, and Denise McNair. These four little girls were going to church on Sunday morning, and they were going to their Sunday school class. And when they got there, um, they were met with tragedy when their church was bombed. These four little girls were murdered on that day. So we have a history here of all these traumatic incidents that have happened, but they were not acknowledged and they were not um, brought to justice. So as we think about social justice and human justice, we wanted to make sure that Addie Mae Collins, Carol Robertson, and Cynthia Wesley, as well as Denise McNair, was acknowledged. Here we have Amira Abid's chain that says breathe. This is intricate work. This is all wood. Why it's very important is not just because of all that's been happening in our history, and of course, you know, George Floyd, I can't breathe. But historically, the chains represent those that was enslaved and brought here to the Americas. It represents oppression. It speaks to those that have been abused. I mean, chains represent those that are confined. As I look at the, the links and I look at the, the message of breathe, um, I think about my ancestors. I think about those that are incarcerated. I think about many of our, our community members that, that have been oppressed and still cannot breathe. It's nothing simple here. It speaks volumes to who we are as human beings. This exhibit is about human rights and social justice. And we need to just take a, a minute to breathe. All right, well, we're here at Kathy Ross's piece. And this piece is called Everything is About Everything. 
And I love, this is a very wonderful piece. It's a fun piece. It's about having enough music, enough shelter, enough musical chairs. Cause you know, with musical chairs, there's always a loser. You know, there's just not enough. But with this, she says, we have enough. We have enough everything. We, and this really makes me think about how we help one another. And there is enough for everyone. But are we willing to share? Are we willing to chair? <laughs> this is a fun piece. I, I enjoyed uh, Kathy's pieces here. Uh, she talks about medical care. She talks about housing and shelters. She talks about food justice here. She talks about art, everything. I, I really enjoyed this piece. Here we're at Ms. Carletta Carrington Wilson's work here. Uh, she's doing work here and exploring textiles. And not only that, I, I see that each of her title, there's a quote from a formerly enslaved person. And so I'm trying to, to search out the messages that are within each of the pieces. As I look at it, I see cotton, I see chain, I see net, I see fiber, I, I see many different mediums in, in here. Back in the day, um, we were not a, allowed to read and write, so we communicated in other ways. We were able to read the world in which we were captive in. And so as I look at these pieces, these pieces are expressions of, of our ancestors and their messages are, are captured within each piece. So we are here at Corey Bennett Anderson's piece. He's one of our locals right here from Polesbo, Washington. Well, you think Corey can capture me? He's done some amazing work. He's been able to bring this pop feel to our history, uh, especially with Kennedy here and Martin Luther King. And we know both of them really sacrificed their own lives to serve our nation here. And so the way he's captured them here and memorialized them here is amazing. And he brings life to it you know, even when their lives had been taken from them. Uh, when I look at both of these pieces, you know, it just makes me feel good um, about who they were and what they did for our nation here. And so I, I just say, it's pop art. Well, thank you for joining us for this Black History Month celebration with the exhibit here at BEMA with our Breathe for Social Justice and Human Rights. We want you to come and visit us here at BEMA and please join us for our Black History Month celebration with Villaging Our Voices.